They say AI steals from artists. I think it's about time an artist steals from AI. On my computer screen, I put up the references. Usually when I do layouts, I'm very quite loose with everything. I just add the detail in at the end. But for something like this, I can't do that. I'm gonna take a look at all of these AI generated images and try to figure out, can I create something new out of it? I would like to do something Spider-Man-ish. There's a lot of themes going on here. We got Arctic Spider-Man, Samurai Spider-Man. I'm pretty much known for my mech work and drawing things that are technical. So one theme I think I could do a really good job with is Cybernetic Spider-Man. Let's go! Trying to quote unquote compete with the images that we've seen generated by AI. All of those are very detailed. That's something that scares even me. All it takes is a few prompts and granted they have to be the right words. And then within a few minutes, they would spit out these images that let's be honest, look really good. To go up against that, it's quite daunting. My final, whether I drew it traditionally or not, will be put up against all of these different AI images. And that's what people are gonna look at. That's the challenge today. Uh, I don't have a lot of confidence. I don't know how well I'm gonna do, but I think it's worth taking a shot. Okay, let's take a look at some of these AI generated images here. Now, most of the images that you're about to see were created by Midjourney. This one, it's called Crusader Spider-Man. These do look really, really cool here. I'm liking the, the breastplate, the really cool sword. Looking at these images makes me think of what kind of prompts the person put in to generate these images. These ones I, I think I'm gonna draw a little bit of the most inspiration from because I'm really liking the way the gold is done for the webbing, the gold is done for the symbol. In fact, when looking at these designs, you can really see the influence from the current Marvel concept artists out there. A lot of this is reminiscent of the designs that they created for the Spider-Man movie. Like, especially this one here. Like, you could really see the influences there, and you could really tell the AI was looking at all sorts of different uh, photos and artwork to generate this type of image. I think the problem most artists have with AI is not the ideas people come up with. Nothing against the ideas. Like, the ideas are fantastic. It's getting to the final image that people have a problem with. Could the AI do this on its own without seeing artwork produced by humans to create these images that we see? But the ideas, really fantastic. Like this one here, the details that are in the, uh, the eyes. And this looks really cool. This is a cybernetic venom. All the different wires that are there. Wow, I'm, I'm really, really impressed. As an artist, all I really have at this point is the process to show people I can actually draw and create these images traditionally. So because I knew I was going to put as much detail in this as I can, like I could have done something like where he's jumping through the city and all that, but I just went with a very, very, very simple pose and just see how much detail I could get into uh, this particular design. There's this uh, motorcycle helmet that I like a lot, which I thought kind of made sense for the cybernetic Spider-Man to have a helmet so that he could lift it up and there would be a human element to his face. What that would look like, I don't know. We'll leave that up to the imagination, but I do want that feeling that we could take this helmet off. And I like the way the eyes were done, where they felt like visors. I really like the way they incorporated the spider symbol on the side. I thought that was a really, really nice touch. But then changing it up just a little bit, like the webbing on the face, I want it to feel just a little bit more technical. I want a little bit more straight lines and edges, little uh, holes and nicks that you would see. I wanted to add that in there. Let's talk about the neck here. So long lines, maybe adding some plating on the side of the neck just to give it a little bit more of that cyborg style feel. Going down, I'm adding this circular plate that goes around his neck. If you remember back in the old Image Comics days, it's like uh, Wildcats, Spartan. Think of like a cybernetic high collar. Whenever I add this, it's always a great opportunity to add a little bit more technical gack, as we call it in the industry. Quick aside story, whenever I would create ships working on movies like Stargate, all the little uh, details that you see on the ship, we would call them GAC. Are you gonna add more GAC? That was the actual technical term for it. GAC, G-A-K. So I was gonna add a little bit more GAC to the inside of uh, the high collar here. And also on the outside as well, I wanted kind of like the smooth plate on the outside, but also being able to see the collarbone and adding in some detail there. 
This gat, I wanted it to be outlined and highlighted by the spider symbol. Now, it's really one of the things that really make a Spider-Man is the spider symbol and the way it's handled. It's gotta feel like a spider. A lot of these AI images here, they do it differently. And just seeing how the legs incorporate into the rest of the design, I think that's something I want to achieve here. Even the high collar, the rim could somehow be maybe a leg, but I also want the legs to kind of go across the body. Now we know a spider has eight legs, but looking at some of these images, sometimes these spiders have more than eight legs. <laughs> I'm not like a spider anymore at that point, is it? Sandipede man. I wanted the legs to kind of go across the chest. I thought that would have been pretty cool to go down and turn into kind of like plates that separate the abs. Kind of what we see when it comes to the original designs in the MCU itself. But also kind of adding a lot of detail into the symbol itself. Like I saw this one here. You see how it, it kind of inserts itself into the middle circle? And I thought that was a really, really fun detail to add. Also this image here, that's where I got the idea of, of incorporating the leg into the high collar and having it sit on plates, like a chest plate, like a rib cage plate, ab plates. When it comes to the sides here, the ribs, I wanted to add a little bit more cybernetic influence in there. So this is in Spider-Man, but I found these images of the Hulk. The cybernetic Hulk, and maybe I will do a Hulk one of these days because this looks like a lot of fun to do. But you see how they have all these little details at the rib cage. I'm really liking the feel of, you know, these big circular plates. I thought that would be a really nice touch to kind of get this where it needs to be detail wise. With the amount of detail I have to do in this drawing, ah, oh, it's gonna take a while. But you know something? I'm enjoying every single minute. Especially when a drawing is turning out the way I'm expecting it to turn out, or even better than I expect it to turn out, that's when I get excited. That's when the minutes fly by, the hours fly by, and I'm just sitting here in my own little world, just creating and drawing. And I think that's something that AI is really lacking. It's that love of creating the artwork. I really think that's something that can't be reproduced. And I'm hoping that's something when the regular person looks at this piece of art, they can really feel that love, that dedication, that care that this artist put into this particular piece of art. Let's get to the shoulders here. I want nice, strong shoulders. Having a shoulder pad, that also makes sense where he would be able to lift up his arms and have full range of motion with his arms. I want the Spider-Man to still feel that way even though he's a cyborg. So one thing about this particular image I like, you see that space between the shoulder plate and the chest. You could feel that range of motion. Now I think adding more gears inside there, that would really make it feel like he could move his arms and that the plates needed that space for things to contract and move out. This is something very similar I do with the Transformers. Whenever I draw Transformers, I will leave a little bit of space there and add a lot more detail in those little areas. I had a student of mine, the way he approaches things is that when it comes to detail, he likes to leave the detail in the joints. So things like the shoulder, the knees, the neck, that's where he likes to add a lot of detail and then leave it less detail in the larger areas like the chest. So there's little things I could take from that where I'm gonna add a lot more detail under the arm or where the arm connects to the body itself. And then adding not just one shoulder plate, but multiple ones. So that when he lifts up his arms, those plates will contract up. It's really the illusion of a full range of motion. That's what I'm trying to get at. When it comes to the hands itself, I wanted to do two things. I wanted to do my traditional fist, clenched fist that I would do in my drawings just because it's easier to draw. But I do want one where he's actually doing the, uh, the Spider-Man, what's it called? The thwip? Because that's Spider-Man. He's got to feel like he gets still whip, concentrating on the joints, leaving the big bones here, a little, little bit less detailed. I didn't leave enough room for legs because I want to get as much detail as I could in the torso itself. The main view is the chest and the helmet, I feel. But at this point, this is what I'm going to go in and add a little bit more rendering. Uh, and there's a lot to do. A lot, a lot of rendering to do to kind of bring this up to the standard I want it to be at. 
So here it is. This is the full line art to my Cyborg Spider-Man. So this particular drawing, I'll admit, took about at least 10 hours to draw. My personal preference, and this is just me, if I were to have to choose between a piece of art that was created by my favorite artist that I knew that person spent all this time and care and created this piece of art, and another piece of art that was very similar, but I knew it was generated in a computer by someone who typed in a few words that was created within a few minutes. For me, the value is more in the artist that created that piece of art. I know everyone's not the same, but coming from an artist's point of view, I think that's the biggest difference between something that's AI generated and something that's created by an artist. What are your thoughts on that? Let me know in the comments down below. Yeah. I have no doubt that AI is going to get better, that they're going to find a way where it's not quote unquote stealing. But for now, 